These are the isms, now yung tinatawag natin schools of thought. I'm going to try to discuss most of the isms and uh, in the hope na this would all be clear to you. The first ism that we have here, of course, is essentialism. Okay, this is what you call back to the basics, the basics, the core, no? Teach only what is the most important. Ito yung sinabi ng essentialism mo. This is a very traditional approach. Sabi ng essentialist mo, learning is one way. Okay, learning is one way. It is only the teacher that can be the source of knowledge. Your teacher is the source of knowledge. The teacher is the paragon of virtues. Okay, you as a learner, you as a student cannot learn from another student. The teacher cannot learn from the students. It is only the teacher that is the source of knowledge. Okay, that's your essentialism. And of course, most importantly, this is back to the basics. Okay, so they advocated the three R's. No? What you call the three R would be your, your reading, arithmetic, and and uh, reading, okay? So reading, arithmetic, and right conduct means an eh, dinadagdag din nila, no? So that's your, your essentialist, essentialist point of view, very traditional. Miss Papia ito, si Miss Minchin, ito yung essentialism mo, okay? Back to the basics. Now, next ism that you have here is perennialism. Perennial, by perennial, you mean everlasting, okay? Perennial means everlasting and changing truths so they believe that whenever you are teaching the kids you should be teaching using the great books okay so sabi nila whatever was effective a long time ago whatever was effective a hundred years ago would still be effective until now okay because they said it should be everlasting whatever was important um a hundred years ago in teaching it should still be important it should still be uh, unchanging until now, okay? So perennial means forever. Unchanging, everlasting truths. Teaching from the great books. Now, next that we have here, uh, this is the most modern way of teaching. The one that we are advocating right now is progressivism. So uh, the father, of course, of progressivism is John Dewey. They are, there are so many, so many theories under this, those that we are we are uh, following right now your multiple intelligences more by Howard Gardner. We'll also be talking about that later. Um, the different learning styles, individual differences. No two students are the same or exactly the same, even if they're twins. That's still part of your progressivism, okay? If um, your students would want to learn outside, bring them outside. It's progressivism. Progressivism also believes that learning does not stop, okay? Learning is a lifelong process. This is the, the enemy of essentialism, okay? Yung progressivism mo yung pinaka-modern. So sabi ng progressivism mo, uh, it is not true that it's only the teacher that is a source of knowledge inside the classroom. The learners can learn from the teacher. The teacher can also learn from the learners and the learners can also learn from themselves. Okay, so that's progressivist point of view. That's progressivism. Now we go to the next ism. This is rationalism. Sabi ng rationalism or reason, reasoning is the cheap source of knowledge. There's no other there's no other source of knowledge but reason. Okay, yan yung pinaka-important yung sinasabi ng rationalism. Your rationalism, the only source of knowledge is reasoning. You have to use your mind. No? Sometimes this is also called cognitivism. Cognitivism, using your cognition. Now, yung kaaway naman ng iyong rationalism would be empiricism. Sabi ng empiricism, it is not a reason that is the true source of knowledge, but it is sense experience. Okay? Dapat may experience mo muna yung bagay-bagay, hindi through reasoning lamang, hindi dahil nakita mo sa research, hindi dahil sinabi ng expert. You have to experience it so that you'll know that it is true. Okay? So sense experience is the true source of knowledge. It is a very common question in the letta. Take note of this. It's a very common question in, in the let. Itong um, contrast between rationalism and empiricism. Sometimes the let would ask you, uh, the rationalists believe that reason is the true source of knowledge. This goes against the belief of which schools of thought or which school of thought. And your answer would be empiricism. Okay? So palagi sila magkaaway. They'd always go against each other no that's your empiricism and rationalism and so um okay i will be skipping my example since we have no time but i hope you you know the difference between your rationalism reason is a true source of knowledge while sense experience that's your empiricism okay empiricism 
to um, sense experience, for you to experience things, that's the true source of knowledge. Experience is the best teacher. Yan yung sabi ng, ng empiricism mo. The next one is existentialism. Freedom and responsibility. The, the student has a choice. The student has a freedom to be whatever he or she would want to be. But along with that freedom, sabi ni Spider-Man, with great freedom or with, with great power comes great responsibility. Okay, so you have the freedom to be whatever it is that you'd want to be. You do have the freedom to choose um, one very important uh um, factor or one very important result of this would be the electives that we have in college. No, you have the freedom to choose whatever elective courses that you have or that you want to choose that you want to study, but you have to be responsible for your own choice. Okay, so yan yung tawag ng sabi ng existentialism. You have the freedom, but you should be responsible to face whatever consequences you might have because of your choice. Okay, that's existentialism. Behaviorism, very important also. No, one of the most very very famous schools of thought. Sabi dito na behaviorism, behavior instead of thoughts, feelings, or motivation should be the focus. Okay, The environment is a very big factor in, in shaping the child. Okay? So sabi ng father of behaviorism, si John Watson, give me a dozen of kids and I can turn them I can turn them, your your kids, into anything I'd want them to be. I can make one a policeman. I can make one a doctor, an engineer, a lawyer. I can even make one a serial killer if I want to. It depends on how I shape their environment. Okay, that's behaviorism. Sabi ng behaviorism mo, the child has no choice. The child has no freedom. It all depends upon his or her environment. Okay, we will talk about uh, various theories on this la later. Now, constructivism, sabi naman ng constructivism mo from the term construct, let the child construct or form his own meaning. Okay, do not give your child the definition of the word, the definition of the term, but give them the activities, the different experiences so that they can come up with the different or his or her own meaning of that word. Okay, so para siya UBD, no? Let the child construct his or her own meaning of the word, okay? Maganda din tong constructivism, kaya lang eh, time-consuming siya minsan, no? Kasi usually self-paced siya. Mamunina, yes. Okay, so uh, self-paced siya. Depende sa pace ng estudyante, no? Yung, yung Montessori approach mo, Montessori approach would um, would be using this. So sometimes it it's pretty time-consuming. Depende sa pick-up ng estudyante, no? Minsan eh, uh, mabagal, mabagal ng estudyante. Now, constructivism is different from social reconstructivism. Okay, magkaiba po sila, no? Social reconstructivism mo naman, they advocate teaching the child to change the society, hence the term social reconstructivism. Okay, so they said in social reconstructivism mo, they said you should teach the child so that he or she is going to be um, a good citizen. So that eventually he or she is going to change the society into something that's better. Okay, might be better, or it might even be the best form of society that we have. Okay, the social reconstructivism. So some products of this would be your uh ilang products nito would be your CAP, yung inyong NSTP. Okay, so production production and social reconstructivism. Change the society into something better. Okay, the social reconstructivist. Now, next one, the next ism that you have here is utilitarianism. Utilitarianism, ito naman yung belief na the more the merrier. Okay, you should always think about the good of the many. Uh, upon making your decision, you should always think about which decision, which, which option is going to make more people or the most number of people happy. That's utilitarianism. Kaya meron tayong uh, law of eminent domain. Okay, so um, the, the government is going to, to get a parcel of your land because more people are going to use this. this. This land is going to be for public use and so you cannot say no. Okay, so that's utilitarianism. The good of the many. Always um, try to think of the number of people that, that will be happy based on the choice that you are going to have. Okay, that's utilitarianism. Pragmatism, this is practical usefulness. Sabi ng pragmatismo, teach only what is practical. Okay, teach only what is going to be of importance, what your students can use. So if you are going to uh, teach in a countryside, for example, in, in a farmland, 
do not teach them how to fish because of course they will not be able to apply that in their daily life. What you teach them is something that's going to be useful, something that's practical. And so that is what you call pragmatism, pragmatic, okay? Practicality, practical usefulness. Now next ism is idealism from the term idea. They believe that idea is reality, okay? Idea is the truth. Even if you don't have it yet uh, in physical form, even if you cannot touch it yet, okay, if it exists in your mind, if it exists as an idea, then it is true. Okay, and yung, yung belief ng idealism. Mo. This is also rooted upon the belief of perfection. Kaya meron kang tinatawag na ideal girl. What's your ideal girl? What's your ideal boy? Okay, it is synonymous to perfection. That's ideal, idealism. Idea is reality. Now, the opposite of idealism is realism. Sabi naman ng realism, it is not ideas that are the true source of knowledge. It should be something that's real. Okay, so sabi reality exists. Uh, this should be exist, not exists, uh, exist independent of one's mind, okay? So reality exists independent of one's mind. Even if you cannot see it, um, that's that if, if something exists independent of one's mind, then it is real, okay? So yan yung sina, sinatawag na realism. Again, this is exist, not exists. Now, the next one, uh, the next two isms that we have are also... Um, closely related to each other. Hedonism, hedonism is the belief in increasing pleasure and decreasing pain, okay? So for them, the true source of happiness is pleasure, okay? The true source of happiness is increasing pleasure and the absence of pain. So ito yung tinatawag natin YOLO, you only live once, no? Yung eat, drink, and be merry, for tomorrow we all die, bahala na si Batman. Um, mag -e enjoy ako ngayon, no? That's your hedonism. Now, the next ism that we have here is related to that. That is Epicureanism by Epicurus. This is a type of hedonism that is more restrained. Okay, so ito yung hedonism na mental hedonism. So, ano siya? Um, happiness, uh, appreciation siya, pleasure of the mind. That's Epicureanism. Okay, so more restrained form of hedonism. Okay. Now, next one, you have stoicism. Sabi dito ng stoicism mo, change what you can, accept what you cannot. Sabi ng stoicism mo, do not cry over spilled milk. Okay? If you can change something, then change it. If you cannot, then accept. Okay? You, you, there is no need for you to cry over spilled milk. If you cannot change it, then just move on. Okay? If your, your, your boyfriend, your girlfriend, for example, does not like you anymore, okay? Meron na siyang iba, iniwan ka niya. If you cannot change him or her or his feelings, her feelings, don't change it. Okay? Wag ka nang umawa. Wag ka nang umiyak. Move on. Sabi ng, sabi ng stoicism. Okay? So change what you can, but accept what you cannot. Okay? So that's stoicism. Very realistic naman yung stoicism. Okay? Wag ka nang uh, umiyak na umiyak kung wala kang magagawa. Humanism, of course, the focus would be the student. Okay, the focus would be the, the person. The strong focus is on the emotional well-being, the human person. That's the focus of humanism. All right, now we go to sample question number one. Please participate, everyone. After finishing the degree in education, teacher M learns that, nev that learning never stops. In fact, she accumulates more knowledge after leaving the portal of her alma mater. This typifies what kind of philosophy? Constructivism, progressivism, perennialism, letter D, humanism. And of course, letter B is the correct choice, okay? That's progressivism, learning never stops. Next one, number 12, teacher Joy serves as an inspiration to his students because of his efficiency and effectiveness as a teacher. The mindset of his students towards him or her is an instance of what kind of philosophy? Is it letter A, realism? Letter B, nationalism? Letter C, idealism? Or letter D, constructivism? A uh, letter C, of course, ideal, ideal perfection. Next, Principal Charlie shares this thought with his teachers. Subject matter should help students understand and appreciate themselves as unique individuals who cannot complete responsibility for their thoughts, who can accept, who accept, sorry, who accept complete responsibility for their thoughts, feelings, and actions. From which philosophy is this thought based? Is it letter A, perennialism, letter B, existentialism, letter C, essentialism, or letter D, progressivism?
And the correct answer, of course, sabi dito, accept full or complete responsibility. Correct answer, of course, would be letter B, existentialism. That's right. Okay, very good. Now we go to number 14. A curriculum should only include those that have survived the test of time and combine the symbols of literature, history, and mathematics. Thus, curriculum like this contains values that are constant and universal. What philosophy describes this kind of curriculum? Correct answer, letter C. Good job. Now we go to the next question, number 15. Which of the following learning theory advocates learning is creating meaning from past experiences? Is it letter A, behaviorism? Letter B, cognitivism? Letter C, constructivism? Letter D, rationalism? What's the answer? Correct answer for number 15 is letter C, constructivism. Okay, learning that is created from the past experiences. Okay, so that's letter C. That's correct. 